Welcome, and thank you for your interest in the DEMIX initiative. My name is Peter Strobel, and together with some of my co-authors, we will try to explain to you in a few minutes what DEMIX is all about. DEMIX stands for the Digital Elevation Model Intercomparison Exercise. Digital elevation models are, as most of you know, fundamental data sets in geospatial sciences. They describe in a numerical way the three-dimensional shape of the Earth's surface on which most human activities take place and they are therefore key in understanding many aspects of our environment. Until like 20 years ago, we had a quite varying, often coarse and inaccurate knowledge of terrain at global scale. This changed when with the Shell Radar Topography mission known as SRTM, for the first time, a worldwide consistent and fairly fine uh, resolution DEM based on satellite data became available at least for latitudes below 60 degrees. Since then, many such data sets have entered the scene, and uh, some of them in are increasingly available to large commu user communities worldwide on cloud-based exploitation platforms. Users, of course, wondered about the differences of these data sets and which ones to use for their specific application. And many comparisons have been done, but these were often limited in terms of area, data sets compared, or domain. To allow a more holistic approach, it was necessary to bring together a broad range of specialists from data providers to application experts, and this was achieved by reactivating the terrain mapping subgroup of the Committee on Earth Observation Satellites and linking it with geomorphometry.org, an association of DEM domain experts. The first point on the agenda of TMSG was DEMIX. With the scope to undertake a state-of-the-art comparison of all major global DMs and provide guidance for their usage. To tackle this, we distributed the various tasks over three subgroups, which convene regularly every two to three weeks via teleconferencing. Subgroup 1 provided a comprehensive and consistent terminology and made sure that we had a common analytical basis. Subgroup 2 is in charge of algorithms and software to make sure that we have tools and protocols which deliver the desired results. And subgroup 3 will take care that anyone has access to data and computing resources. And with this, I hand over to Peter Goss to tell you more about subgroup 1. There are five global one arc second DEMs. And if you look at them initially, they look very similar. But if you look closely, there are visual differences such as the crispness of the ridges, the valleys, and the alluvial terraces on the right side of this DEM, and there are statistical differences. So we want to determine if one is better than the others or if they vary by terrain types. We first defined a DEM, and our simple definition, although it's much more complicated, is that a DEM is a gridded, geo-rectified model of the Earth's surface. There are a number of spheres on the Earth that complicate our definition of the DEM, in particular, the hydrosphere, how we deal with water, do we do the top of the water, do we do the base of the water, and the cryosphere, the same thing with the glaciers. For the DEM, we can talk about the digital surface model, the first return sensed by the sensors, the terrain model, which is the bare Earth, or a non-vegetated surface, which removes the difficulty of determining what the ground would look like if you removed buildings. For DEMs, we have to worry about the pixel is point versus the pixel is area depiction. For the one arc second, the area sensed by the sensor that collects the DEM is approximately the one arc second pixel size, so they're very similar. But if we subsample to go to leather resolutions, they will be very different. There's also a one-half pixel offset on one of these DEMs. The resolution of a DEM, of course, affects the amount of detail that we see. And as we go to larger and larger point spacings, we average the ground more and we see less. We looked at slope as an important characteristic of the DEM, both for its own sake and its importance in many applications. And the fact that as a derivative, slope is very sensitive to noise or imperfections in the DEM. We started with a UTM DEM, and all of the software we tested gave essentially the same results shown by the slope histograms here. However, when we go to an arc second DEM, such as the five global DEMs, we get very different results with some of the software. Much of the software says, 
that you should reinterpolate the DEM to UTM, which unfortunately introduces errors and changes the characteristics of the DEM. And we've documented which software can correctly deal with arc second DEMs and produce slope maps that are identical to a comparable UTM DEM. Finally, we've come up with a tiling mechanism to select 10 kilometer test areas to compare the different DEMs. This is approximately 10 kilometers because it's in a geographic spacing and we change the size of the tiles in arc seconds as we approach the poles. This enables us to look at the characteristics of each tile. Um, there's four different landform and land cover classifications on the right and the colors show you the variety of landforms because one of the things we suspect is that which DEM works best will depend upon what terrain it is used in. When it comes to the comparison of DEMs, usually what we have is a test site and some reference data. Then each DEM being tested is compared to the reference data and some sort of error metric is calculated like RMSE. With the values of this metric, we can then build the rank of the DEMs. But in a global experiment, things get a little bit more complicated. With several test sites, the ranking for each one might be different. And if the same DEM is not the winner in all of them, how should we decide? The same situation also applies to metrics. Since one DEM might be the winner based on one metric, but the loser based on another. Now for the DMIX experiment, we have devised a strategy that can accommodate both situations. Here we are using the word criteria to denote a procedure that can build a rank among DEMs. This criteria might be objective, like a metric such as RMSE, or subjective, like a visual evaluation of the sharpness of mountain ridges. As long as it can produce a ranking, we're good. And with those criteria in hand, we can then build a table. The no hypothesis in our testing is quite simple. We're trying to prove or disprove that there are statistical differences between the DMs. If there are differences, then we can say, for instance, that one DM is better than the other for one particular test site. This is a setup commonly known as the wine contest. But instead of wines, we have DMs. And instead of judges, we have the criteria each one producing a different ranking among the DMs. Another nice thing about the DMIX experiment is that you can tailor the results for your interests. If you want to know which DM is better for high mountain areas, you can restrict the results to test sites with only those characteristics. But remember, the best DM based on that criteria might not be the same for another criteria like lowlands. The same idea is true if you use more traditional metrics like RMSC versus the accuracy of slope. Finally, with some good reference data openly available, any new DM can be added to the experiment. We're planning to offer the code for the computations and all the reference data openly available to everyone. A takeaway message from this exercise of collaboration that we all consider has been quite productive. Increasing availability and diversity of global DMs has created the need to understand and assess their quality. And the demand for an informed choice depending on the particular application or the specific geographic region. Common terminology and standards for specifications, methods, and algorithms are a prerequisite for DEM interoperability. Understanding the various reference frames used to represent the data and the conversion to a common reference frame is imperative before these assessments of quality are performed. In addition, health warnings can be given for errors and also artifacts that will be generated when using specific CODs or open source software. For example, some software cannot handle geographic like LON to create slope correctly. And finally, the statistical framework of a wine contest has been applied to allow users to select their best choice for the specific use case. This framework also allows for new DEMs and new criteria to be incorporated. Thank you.
Got interested or want to know more? Contact us or subscribe to Demix at the address given below.